Hello and welcome. Today we're going to talk about creating a table of contents in Canvas. As we get started, let's just dive right in and test the table of contents. So here on my page, this would be like a syllabus page, like a course overview page perhaps. It has guidelines on attendance and instructor information, course descriptions, things like that. And you'll notice at the top of the page, I have my table of contents right here. It's in a bulleted list, and if I click on one of these things, then it'll take me to that part of the page. And then I can jump to the top of the page, I can click on something else, and it'll take me down the page. So these are all hyperlinks, and the hyperlinks are taking me to places on the page that I've specified in the code. So let's take a look at what exactly that entails. I'm going to go ahead and edit this page, and we're going to get to the HTML editor. So here's my HTML code for this page. We're looking at different elements. I have a header, table of contents, and here I can see that I have a list. It's an unordered list. That means these are bullet points as opposed to numbers. And then I have my content, course description, course methodology, etc. And you notice that each of those are hyperlinked, but the hyperlink, the href, isn't taking the students to someplace on the internet. It's not www.somewhereontheinternet.com. It's an actual ID. So I have a hashtag or a pound sign, and then I have my ID that I've created. I'm not super innovative, so I just called them section one, two, three through eight. And it doesn't matter what you call them. The important thing is that you remember this because then you have to call the IDs. So if I jump down here to my H2, this is where I set up my ID. ID equals section underscore one in between quotation marks. And that's my ID. So so I set that up saying this is where I want section one to be. And then up top here, I say, OK, let's take us to section one. And so the browser knows, Canvas knows that when the students click on this, when they click on course description, it'll take them right to this ID right here. And likewise, I have an href for section two, course methodology, or let's jump down the page. Let's go to attendance. So section five would be attendance. And if I scroll way down the screen, I can see section five is right here. I put it within the header. ID equals and then section underscore five in between the quotation marks. Now this doesn't have to be in an H2. I put them all in H2s, but it could be within a paragraph. It could be within a div or a span. It could be, you know, whatever you want. And I just happen to choose, okay, it makes sense for me that this is the section header. So the header is an H2 and that's where I want them to go. Last thing you'll notice is that before the H2s, before the sections, I put in this code, href equals top, and then jump to the top of the page. Now you don't have to create an ID for top because by default the browser knows that this means the user should go right up to the top of the page. And so when they click on this, it takes them right back up here. And then if they click on this, grading policies, section four, it's gonna take the students down to the ID called section four and reiterating, you can name these whatever you want. This could be hashtag alpha and beta and omega. It could be hashtag Disney, hashtag whatever you want. You're the only one who really knows the behind the scenes here. The students are just seeing clickable links. So I know that's a little bit complicated, so I'm gonna simplify it even more. Basically, on this page, what we're looking at is this code right here. And I'm gonna put this code on our supplementary blog on howtocanvas.com so that you can just copy this and paste it and work from there. You can delete, you can modify, you can call the sections, whatever you want. But basically what we have is a table of contents and that's optional, um, a bulleted list, and you don't have to have bulleted lists. I'm actually gonna show you a couple more strategies that you can use other than just bulleted list. But I have an H1, and so this hyperlinks to H1, which takes me to this section right here. This one right here is hyperlinked to section underscore five, so that would take me right there. And then periodically, I'll just put a hyperlink to jump to the top of the page just to make it convenient for the students that they can come up if they want to. And so this is the very basic code. And of course, you can switch out the words and you can rename the IDs to whatever you want. And you don't have to use H2, you can use divs, paragraphs, whatever you want. But this is the nuts and bolts of what that table of contents is behind the scene. So go visit my website, copy this code, and put it into one of your courses. Now let's jump back to the regular page one more time just so that we can play around with that. Now that you've seen behind the scenes and you know how this is working, then you can go ahead and test it, make sure all the links work. So if I click on grading policies, it takes me to the grading policies. And this is an H2 right here, and that's where I put my ID for grading policies. I'm gonna jump back to the top of the page. Let's go down to other resources. 
where look at that you can access our youtube channel and there's also a link to how to canvas.com as well as our social media now let me show you another way that i've set up a table of contents and this isn't going to look pretty it's just for demonstration purposes but instead of a bulleted list i have them all laid out on one line and I just separated each of the hyperlinks with a character here. And so it takes up less vertical real estate. It might be a little bit more confusing. The bulleted list is pretty well delineated, uh, but if you like this look and feel, then you can try for that. And you can test this out. The functionality is the same. Go up to the top of the page. I can go to course description, jump to the top of the page. And then this last thing that I'll show you here are some buttons that I created. And this is the code for those buttons. This code will be on our website as well, so you can just go ahead and grab that. It's pretty basic. All, all the button is is a hyperlink, so you have an anchor, and I chose these classes, btn-large, btn-info, and btn. Those are my three classes that I chose, and that makes a button that looks like this. I also put some margin. I put a margin of four pixels just to give it a little bit of space in between the buttons. And then the important thing is the href, so I have href section underscore one. It's the same href as this link right here. You can have more than one hrefs taking you to an ID, but you can only really have one place on your course where there is that ID. So both of these links would take me to this ID right here. So if I click on attendance, that'll take me down to the attendance section. I can jump back up. If I click on this attendance, it also takes me to the attendance section. I personally think that these buttons are very slick looking and this is my preference, um, but you can make a tabled list, just a bulleted list or however you like it. And that's how you would go ahead and create a table of contents in your course. And I hope this really helps you out and I hope that more than anything that it helps your students so that they can better navigate the content, especially on some of our pages that have a lot of content, a lot of scrolling that at least we can help them out as they bounce around the page. We can help them navigate, help organize the content in a way that makes sense. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to this channel. I appreciate all of my subscribers. Hit that notification button so that you can know when new content comes out. And of course, visit us all over social media as well. I appreciate you being with me and I hope to see you next time. Until then, happy teaching and learning.